Delegates at the Africa ICT Ministers Forum have described media freedom and access to information as important pillars for sustainable development. Now, the forum took place in the Namibian capital, Vindhuk, on Thursday. Namibia's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Natumbo Nandi Ndwaita, says these pillars are fundamental international human rights as per the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. The Deputy Prime Minister added that it's not just the access that needs to be improved, but but also the seeking, the gathering and the dissemination of such information should be free and guaranteed. To discuss the significance of this event, we are now joined by the Regional Secretariat Director at the Media Institute of Southern Africa, Tabani Moyo in Harare in Zimbabwe. Uh, Mr Moyo, we lost you there for a second a little earlier on. We hope to have you back now. Welcome back. Thank you very much. All right. Now, in her opening remarks, Namibia's information minister called on African governments to innovate and invest more in the education and the training of people in new technology to empower the African youth with soft skills and technology. Just how significant uh, is this appeal to the continent? Uh, it, it, it is a key uh, you know, call because uh, part of uh, the revised document, uh, or which is uh, the Vindoc Declaration plus 30, uh, a successor declaration to the Vindoc Declaration, uh, which was, uh, you know, published or agreed upon 30 years ago in Vindoc, same place, same venue in Namibia, um, speaks strongly around the need for um, media literacy uh, as part of an enabling pillar uh, towards the enjoyment of the right to express, the right to enjoy fundamental freedoms, uh, especially by the youth, as it also opens up uh, and speaks strongly around development of ICTs. So the core is key because of the youth dividend. Um, we, we have got a very uh, young population in Africa, and uh, if we go a, a tier da downwards uh, towards ensuring that uh, media literacy and ICT development is part of the curriculum, uh, at, at, at younger and tender ages, uh, we, we, we develop a troop uh, of, of, of users that are responsible, uh, that are more progressive, that are more in, in, you know, innovative uh, and inventive in terms of utilization of the online spaces. So her core is critical on the other front in that uh, it's calling upon uh, the regional or the member states of the continent to prioritize laws that enable that enjoyment of that right. Uh, as you are aware that uh, the bulk of the African countries have come up with cyber laws that are securocratic in nature, leaning strongly on heavy-endedness in terms of regulation of the internet space, uh, while being uh, mean in terms of promoting digital rights. Um, and, and this stifles the culture of innovation. Uh, it's, it promotes targeting uh, of users of the online spaces, uh, which is counterproductive, counter and, and out of sync with uh, Vision 2030, uh, continent aimed at uh, stimulating growth using ICT and digital economy. Hence, they need to stimulate uptake of ICTs uh, by the younger population so that they leapfrog the challenges we are facing as the continent uh, and anger our development on ICT development, media freedom uh, and access to information. A key call from the Deputy Prime Minister. Now, Mr. Moyo, the Africa ICT Ministers Forum has been tasked with, amongst others, uh, to commit and affirm full support and, uh, of course, the, the implementation of the Vindog Plus 30 Declaration as adopted by the gathering of the 2021 World Press Freedom Day on the 3rd of May this year. How will this commitment benefit the African populace? It's a key, it's a key commitment if the member states are going to adhere uh, to this uh, affirmation because Vindoc plus 30 uh, is now anchored on the, you know, the, the main theme which, which, which came out of it was that uh, information is a public good. Uh, if it is a public good, it means that if I enjoy it, I'm not taking it away from the next citizen. Hence, it, is, it, it remains public, uh, just like uh, sovereignty, just like the right to, 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 to health. You know, it's a public need that needs to be supported. Uh, and if you have got a public good in the form of information, uh, these member states should then not uh, be in a habit uh, of coming up with laws that are contrary to this commitment and affirmation uh, which the Deputy Prime Minister called for. Remember, countries like Botswana, Eswatini, Tanzania, uh, Malawi and Zambia have already gazetted uh, or have already come up 
uh, with cyber security laws. Uh, and in Tanzania, for example, this has led to the closure of many newspapers uh, by the authorities, um, uh, you know, in, in using the, these uh, very same laws. Uh, when in, in, in Zambia, they are using taxes, and Tanzania using taxes uh, to, to counter or to, to discourage use uh, of the online spaces. Further, remember that uh, in, in Africa, we are also stubborn of internet shutdowns. Uh, the most recent being Eswatini, being Zambia during the elections, but also Uganda during the elections, talk of DRC, talk of Tanzania. So this affirmation by, by, by member states is key to avoid, including Zimbabwe in 2019, to avoid the culture of shutting down internet as it is uh, counterproductive, hinders business growth, disrupts economic activity, uh, and disrupts the enjoyment of our rights to express online. Hence, if it is a call that is adhered to, one thing it will do is that it will promote invention and innovation, which was the theme of the meeting, uh, but also feel that the meeting was talking more uh, towards uh, uh, the future uh, in terms of uh, uh, leaping forward, frog, leap, leapfrogging uh, towards issues of uh, AI and the digital economy and how to promote indigenous languages and indigenous knowledge. Uh, what we need to do as Africans to better engage the big tech uh, so that they are also accountable and, and responsive uh, to the needs of Africa as a huge market. So the collective, um, uh, in terms of uh, the agreement and pledge, is that we are utilizing the muscle uh, to negotiate uh, and begin with the big tech and, and stimulate um, the media literacy so that there is continued use of multiple channels of media. And that media in its traditional forms, uh, including SABC, is sustainable post the pandemic uh, of COVID-19 so that uh, we remain competitive as a people, promoting ideas, markets, uh, so that we live frog as humankind. And I suppose what underscores this initiative is the issue of uh, transparency and the promotion thereof. And the, the, this declaration, Mr. Moyo, also contains recommendation related to the, pr the promotion of transparency and accountability in the digital age, uh, the regulatory approaches, uh, the social responsibility initiatives for media sustainability and survival in this digitalized world. And, and the big question is, how far then is Africa from meeting these challenges, especially at the times of COVID-19 pandemic and struggling economies? Uh, what is key is, is that uh, there is that commitment to bring uh, the, the, the member states and stakeholders together uh, and to promote checks and balances in terms of the steps we are taking. Uh, and part of our submission is, uh, is, is MISA, uh, was that uh, there is need to ensure that the laws that emerge are promoting investment in the continent. Uh, when you promote investment, you do not need to scare away investors uh, with laws that are counter, uh, you know, you know, the values of growth uh, that are anti-digital uh, rights, uh, that are exclusionary in outlook. Hence, they need to be broad based uh, and to promote uptake of these uh, uh, platforms. But further, to allow for the expansion of infrastructure to ensure that we reach a net neutrality in terms of internet spread across the continent. That requires conventional investment. Uh, and for that to happen, we need to start from somewhere. And part of these uh, discussions, uh, starting with uh, the, 30th, the, the 30th of April uh, into 3rd May commemorations, which reviewed the declaration, which was somewhat archaic, uh, towards improving it, uh, and making it a living document that can then define the next steps for the next five to ten years, uh, which will see uh, governments being held accountable on issues of transparency, uh, promoting a direct investment uh, in the industry of the media so that uh, uh, in the age of disinformation and misinformation, you retain a media as a form of authenticated uh, information flow uh, to ensure that citizens of the continent uh, make informed decisions, knowing very much that the, the information they are consuming has gone through the meal of gathering news uh, and disseminating it, which is uh, authentic uh, and which is uh, verified uh, for the betterment of the continent as it makes informed decisions. Hence, the need for the various uh, member states to invest towards uh, uh, revolving funds around um, injecting into media development, uh, tax moratoriums, tax breaks, uh, and ensuring that... Uh, 
they aggregate various develop, media developmental funds uh, within the various jurisdictions and ensure that the media is also considered as one of the sectors that have been heavily ravaged by this pandemic and requires an injection uh, to boost uh, its, uh, its, uh, its, uh, its traction uh, post the pandemic. Hence, this is a key uh, intervention at this moment as it then uh, starts to, to articulate the future that we want. Uh, and develop mechanisms of holding each other accountable. I think this was a noble idea coming uh, uh, just a few months uh, after the May 3 uh, commemorations. And it's not just the media, Mr. Moyo, but uh, information and communications technology, which has been cited as a key catalyst towards realizing sustainable development of African countries and, of course, the betterment of the livelihoods of people to realize the AU's agenda 26 to 3. So... How then can information technology assist the continent to achieve this goal amid all the economic and the security challenges prevalent across the continent? Uh, re remember that uh, access to information is not uh, uh, mainly targeting the media, but the citizens themselves, that they need to have information uh, that is credible for them to make informed decisions. Right. Hence, the theme of the of the of the world press freedom commemoration of may 3 uh, which said information is a public good towards transfer towards review uh, of the declaration and this revised declaration now cast this public good uh, that if you want uh, a people of the continent to make decisions, they must know about how much the governments of their respective countries are budgeting for their development, how much they are engaging in terms of debt or borrowing on behalf of their own uh, you know, countries, uh, what are the issues that are affecting them at any given time. More so in the age of the pandemic, the more information you get, the better uh, you save lives. Uh, and how do you access information um, on, on, on the technological platforms, uh, especially, especially uh, when we are migrating towards uh, online education, uh, when there is this huge divide between the rural and urban constituencies, uh, hence the need for government to, to chip in uh, with the universal services funds to expand infrastructure to, 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 to shorten the divide between the, the urbanites uh, and the rural establishment so that all our children have got equal access to education using different platforms. So information is a public good. is not about the media, but these very citizens uh, of the continent, how do you uh, ensure that they gain information that make them competitive citizens of the globe? And for, for that to happen, you start with your own governments uh, within your respect Respective uh, jurisdictions uh, that they must be responsive uh, to the requests for information, not only when it is requested for, but proactively release it uh, so that the citizens can also enjoy uh, the rights that are provided in their respective constitutions. But remember, um, governments hold the bulk of the information, but equally so, the private sector with the public function. Uh, like your mobile network operators, they also need to be guided uh, in terms of how they release information for the public good. Like your platforms that have got uh, the world citizen database, how do they release information uh, in a way that is uh, accountable, that does not harm uh, or, or compromise the privacy uh, of that information? So this, this window declaration plus 30 uh, is a new contract among the global citizens. It is a gift to the world. Uh, from the people of Africa, uh, as it is from Namibia that we decided that we must have broad and overarching um, re resolutions around the future, the next 10 years, which involved media literacy, access to information, uh, media sustainability, the use of the ICTs and the, the tech to develop uh, not only the people of Africa, but humanity, because at this moment, humanity is on trial uh, under siege of this pandemic. Not only was it a pandemic, but also there was a disaster of the Mr. Moyo, unfortunately, environment. Uh, but, uh, I do beg your pardon for interrupting. We are out of time, unfortunately. But uh, just briefly, why is Internet so expensive in countries like South Africa, costing even much higher than in many developed Western countries? And how does such impede access to, you know, the economic uh, benefits, I mean, the economic opportunities and key spheres of life like education we need to invest in infrastructure that brings the internet to our shores uh, at the moment we are getting it via the sea cables from elsewhere 
Uh, hence, the need to stimulate innovation and invention so that we develop internet-based solutions from within, harnessing new technologies, ensure that we are also providing uh, the broadband that defines access to the internet. At the moment, we have got weak infrastructure. We are importing uh, the, 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 the broadband services, uh, and most of it coming from the Americas, Europe, uh, and the Asian communities. All right, Mr. Moyo, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting us. Indeed, that was the Regional Secretariat Director at the Media Institute of Southern Africa, Tabane Moyo, joining us from Harare in Zimbabwe.